Hey guys, welcome to my channel where it is all about hope, healing, and wholeness. If you are new here, my name is Shannon. And on this channel, I pretty much talk about growing in God, growing in business, a little prophetic word here and there as God gives it to me. And I also try to focus on overcoming anything that stands in the way of these things. And so whether or not it's mentally, spiritually, uh, or emotionally, we want to make sure that we are overcoming. And so today, you know, I was asking the Lord what he wanted me to share. I felt like I really didn't have anything. And so y'all, I was in my little space and place. If you're having trouble hearing God, I was in that space and place that I talked about on, um, I think it's my video on, um, what to do when you feel more spiritual activity around you or you feel more going on in the spiritual realm. Um, but I was in that space and place. And that is indeed where the Lord spoke to me. And so if you're having trouble hearing God or whatnot, please watch that video because it took me years to learn this. Uh, what I shared in that video about that little nugget that I was talking about in hearing God. When God spoke this to me, I got so, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so good. Like, I need to hear this, God. This is for me. But he said, no, he said, tell them where they have given you access. They, whoever, whether or not it's businesses, whether or not it's a job, whether, whatever it is, whatever, where they have given you access. He, God, has given you authority. <laughs> Y'all, wherever they think, oh, I'm going to just go ahead and let her in. I'm going to just let him come on in here in this position, in that job. But God said, oh, no, I'm giving them authority right there. And a lot of times when we go in situations, we feel like we're either being overlooked, we're not being valued, we feel like we're being dismissed, and whether or not that's because people aren't paying you what you believe that they should be paying you, whether or not people are not promoting you the way that you should be promoted, whether or not you feel like people are not even seeing you. We let our emotions get in the way, and when we let our emotions get in the way, we actually forfeit God's purpose for us there. And let me tell you, I have been guilty of this. I have been guilty of this, but I got the revelation now, baby. And when we allow our emotions to come in, when we feel like we are not being valued, we are losing God's perspective. God says you are not being overlooked. You are undercover. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited again. Okay, hold it together, Shannon. So you are not overlooked. You are not overlooked. And so you guys, they cannot see you coming. And that is part of that of God's plan. Because let me tell you, if they saw you coming, if they knew who you were, if they knew the authority that you carry because of the God who you serve, there is no way that they would give you access to that place you know there is no way that Pharaoh would have given Moses access to his palace, to everything that his own children had access to if he knew that what Moses would come back one day and be the deliverer. So let's say this. A lot of times what happens, we go in places, we get in our feelings because we have issues with either rejection, abandonment, or any other thing. And so when people don't treat us the way that we believe they should treat us, we allow our emotions to come into play. Instead of being offended, we need to be tuned in to the purpose that God has for us in that place that we are really not overlooked, but undercover. And so we even see this played out in the life of a girl. One year she comes into this kingdom, an orphan, In the next couple of years later, she is the queen and there is purpose in it. She, as the queen, needs to learn how to maneuver around her husband, the king. She needs to be able to see who is who. You know, Queen Esther would have never been able to make the impact. She would have never been able to save her people group had she not prepared for what God had her to do. We have to learn that our significance 
is not in our title, it's not in our role, it's not in our position, it's not in our money, that's not our significance. Our significance is having the perspective and purpose of God. So you guys, we really need to understand, like I got to get this and I hope that you're with me in this. So we need to get out of our feelings. We need to be able to glean. How do they do things? What is the protocol? Who are the people in positions of power? We need to know the personalities. All of these different things that we can see played out in the lives of Esther, played out in the life of Joseph, played out in the life of so many other people. So I wanted to share with you two different things about what happened to me and how important it is to know how to maneuver for your own benefit, but also maneuvering without really, um, you know, undermining your integrity. I had gotten a job one time working at an organization and I remember that I had, you know, long-term goals, short-term goals as far as my professional career was concerned. And I knew that when I was at this specific organization, I wanted to be promoted to a director position. And so I learned the CEO, I learned who were the people that he really depended on and relied on the most. I learned the people who he, whose opinion he really respected. And so what I did was really positioned myself, my work, made sure that I had great relationships with all of these people. I was going, I was intent on being promoted to a director. And because I positioned myself with such favor, I made sure that everything that he needed to have done, everything that he even dreamed that he wanted to have done, as far as you know, my job and what my department would accomplish, all of that stuff was done. So when the time came for uh, you know that promotion to come about, I just went right on in. I slid right on in. There wasn't even a question. And even the people who I knew, whose opinion he really valued, they were like, oh yeah. So that's number one. Number two, in college, I remember I was taking a summer school class. I remember the specific professor was known to flirt with women and that if you flirted with him and you smiled and you grinned and you did all this whatever, that you would get a great grade. And one of the girls had said, you know, I know that, you know, this professor, he likes women. If you flirt with him or whatever, you get a good grade. Well, my strong suit was never accounting, but I knew one thing. I was not going to flirt with this guy. I was not going to flirt with this professor. But let me tell you, this girl who told me, oh, she was doing everything to flirt with this professor. And... At the very end, that he graded on the curve. And even though he graded on the curve, she and I were like right there as far as our grades were concerned, because we always talked about, you know, what did you get on this test? What did you get on this assignment or whatever afterward? And he gave me a grade above hers, even though we got pretty much the same grades on almost everything. So, I did not undermine my integrity and I felt like I walked with class when I was in that in his class. So I just wanted to share that they knew how to maneuver. Moses knew how to maneuver in that space because he knew how things were done. He had been there gleaning how things were done. So that's number one, the how. The two is helping others. Listen, in this space and place, it is imperative that we keep a servant's heart. Imperative. We have to keep a servant's heart when everything is not going for us. When David was being hunted, actually hunted, David pretty much, he took the rejects in the city, these people who were banished or whatnot, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to help you. You're not rejects. I'm going to make you mighty men. And that's exactly what he did. He led those men, 300 men, and they became mighty, mighty men. What did Joseph do while he was sitting in jail, falsely accused? 
he was helping two guys who had these dreams who didn't know what they meant. And he was like, well, I can interpret dreams. So you know what? Even though these people, David and Joseph, were given the bad end of the stick and for no reason, nothing that they did, nothing that, you know, was going on wrong in their lives or whatever, but they were given the bad end of the stick, but they still served. They still served. They still helped others. And Joseph interpreted the dreams of these two guys who were frustrated by not knowing what the dreams meant. And it was for purpose. That very act of serving others was the connector that got Joseph out of prison, right? And, you know, sometimes serving does not have to be the big things either. And there was a time when I was in a certain position and I was going through a lot in that position. There was so much pressure. A lot of people knew it. And I remember my friend Camille, who worked there as well, she um, was dealing with something or whatever, and she came to me. And even though I was like completely overwhelmed with, with, with what was going on with me, I stopped and I really encouraged her. And I, I don't even know what I said to her, but whatever I said, it made such an impact that the next day she brought flowers in for me. She left a note on my desk and thanked me for encouraging her. I didn't even think that what I did was that big of a deal, but I took the time and I met her where she was and I encouraged her and that served her in that capacity. So sometimes serving others does not have to be these big biblical things, but it can be just stopping for the one, recognizing the one and just meeting them where they are. So we need to have a servant's heart, helping others. Number two, third is honoring authority. Listen, if you're like me and you've sat under some people who you are like, oh, uh-uh, it ain't going down like this. Whoo, do a who style with me. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because, listen, honoring authority is actually key that we have to learn how to master in order for God to give us the authority. Even if they're wicked, even if they're no good, Daniel had multiple kings who, one, put him in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The other put him in the lion's den. I mean, he still put him in those places where they thought that Daniel's life was going to be over. Daniel came out of those places and basically had no ill will, no ill feelings toward them because his focus was on God. And he told them, God will save us. And even if he doesn't, we already know God is able. So their focus was not on the king. Their focus was on their God. His focus was on his God. So regardless of your circumstance, your situation, how hard it is, the people coming against you, how bad they're treating you, all of these different things that I know, I know I'm not the only one who's dealt with, but we still honor. So we still honor the person in authority. And you know, all three of these areas, whether or not it is learning how and gleaning whether or not it is helping others or whether or not it is honoring authority. They all take a measure of humility. And that is, I think, the overlying theme over all of this. Humility, humility, humility. And so I hope that this was helpful for you all. And um, if you are not already subscribed, please subscribe, please share this. If you know of anybody, this might help and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.